So in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be allowing um, variables to be assigned as numbers exp and expressions. And if we have time, we'll be printing out uh, variables. So we'll be allowing you to you know, do something like uh, print whoops, variable name. And then the variable will print out to the screen. Uh, also, if you're creating this yourself and you want to use different um, sort of characters to denote a variable name, you can just change it yourself in the lexer. You can just go up here. And where we um, chose uh, a dollar sign, all you have to do is change that to, you know, if you wanted um, a, a percent sign, you could use that, or you wanted any other sign, uh, you could use that to denote a variable. Um, but, uh, but I chose to follow PHP and use a dollar sign. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to uh, just say a variable. I'll set it equal to the number 10 and now what I'm going to do in the parse section is I'm going to uh, create an uh, or. So as you can see up here we have or and then we have uh, expression or number or string. I'm going to do the same thing and say or uh, num um, or expression. So if it's, uh, we're going to just copy all this actually again, not all of it actually, just this part of it, and cut this, and we'll store it in here, and then put this in here. Uh, the only difference with expressions is we want to evaluate the expression first. So what I want to do is I just want to paste this in here, but before that, uh, what I want to say is uh, eval, let's just look up here, it says eval expressions, we'll do that, and say eval expression. This will evaluate it to a number and then assign that number to uh, the variable name. And uh, let's go and run this first. We should get nothing, or we should just get uh, this uh, symbol table returned or printed to us, but we get an error. So that means there's either something wrong in the lexer or something wrong in the parser. So uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll just go up here and return our print tokens. And we'll actually return nothing. And this way, returning um, an empty string will tell us whether uh, the program is freezing after the tokens or before the to or before all the tokens have been parsed. So as you can see, this shows we're parsing the tokens correctly. So it's something in the parser that's failing. So I'll just uh, return that, or I'll return tokens again, and I'll just comment this out because we know it's not something wrong with the lexer. It's something wrong with the parser, and I can already guess what it is. The reason there's something wrong is because here what we did was we said, um, we, used, we got the word string, and we did that by uh, going here and getting the first six characters. But if we go over here, we can see num isn't six characters long. It's only three characters long. So we need to get the first three characters. And for EXPR, we want to get the first four characters. So as you can see, we get uh, an empty uh, symbol table. And the reason for that is, okay, the reason for that is we actually want to do num plus two and num plus two, or i plus two, because uh, the one, uh, this is zero, this is one, and this is two. So it's, one is actually equals, so we want it to be two, and that's how we get the string num in the EXPR. So if we run that, you can see it uh, stores the number 10 in a variable. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in an expression. And okay, it says eval expression takes one. Okay, the reason that didn't work is we're giving it two parameters and it only takes one, and that means we need to take out this first parameter and we want to put this first parameter here and then comma and then this will be the second parameter and not only that we want to get rid of the first five characters because the first five characters of the EXPR uh, of the EXPR token is the word is the letters EXPR colon as you see here uh, okay you can't actually see it but um, the first five characters are EXPR token or EXPR colon, which is the 
um, identifier for the token so we want to get rid of that and just pass it the numbers itself which if, uh, if we get rid of the first five characters then all we're left with is the actual expression which in this case is 10 plus 4 and then we're um, passing that to eval expression so if we run this you can see it gives us 14 but we want to uh, not just say 14 we want to um, say num so I'm going to I'm going to uh, pass it the string num and then I'll say plus ex or plus the expression this way the uh, whoops I want to say num colon this way the uh, token when assigned will have the correct value uh, okay whoops that was my bad so what we want to do is we want to say uh, num colon and then just this string so we want to append this string to uh, the expression when it's evaluated and the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the str function and that's going to convert it to a string for us and this way we can append this uh, num uh, colon part of the token on and this way uh, our variable we, or we can uh, keep track of the variables type so as you can see now it says num14 if I give it you know another expression say this oops and uh, run that you can see it gives us the correct number so not only do we want to be able to assign variables um, we want to be able to you know retrieve the value of them we want to be able to print them so I'm going to be able to type print and say you know variable and get the variable value back from the dictionary so the way we do that is we go up here and we just want to copy the uh, this section of the parser again the lexer is fine because the lexer doesn't take the order of the tokens into account it just uh, identifies them and stores them in the tokens um, the tokens list so for example if I go up here and just print that you'll see the lexer doesn't care uh, just ignore the error at the end but just uh, you can see here the lexer doesn't care about uh, anything other than okay the actually does it seems to uh, after the print uh, not be able to identify the variable name which is the uh, dollar sign okay so I did a bit of debugging and as you can see um, there's nothing wrong with the print statement this is the actual token that we're trying to identify and obviously we haven't this token doesn't exist so what we actually want to do is we want to come in here we're going to say if to equals less than or to equals greater than oops greater than um, and um, state equals zero and var started actually is a better way to do that we're just going to get rid of this and we can put it down in this one here so we'll say uh, if uh, toke equals less than or toke equals greater than then we'll say uh, toke equals not or toke equals uh, nothing because we want to reset it because that's the end of the token we want to go up here and say, um, just copy this. I want to copy that. Actually, this part too. And we want to go, where is it? Here and just paste it in. And we can get rid of that actually because we have it down here. So uh, that should be um, it. Let's just run this. Okay, um, expected an indented block on line 55. So, uh, okay, we just need to push this in. So, uh, as you can see now, we're um, able to get the variable name after the print. So, we want to come down here and we want to select this and just paste it in. And we want to change that to var and change that to 3. We want to come in here and just say uh, var. So basically, we're just repeating ourselves over and over. We're just changing this to var and changing this uh, from do print. Um, instead of do print tokes i or whatever, what we want to do is we want to print. Um, we want to get the variable first. We'll actually say uh, get variable. Uh, it doesn't uh, follow you know the do whatever the do assign or the do print we're just going to call it get because we're uh, retrieving a value so I'll say get variable 
uh, and we're going to do a very we're gonna look up the variable name based on uh, where is it var which is tokes i plus one so we're gonna give this uh, tokes i plus one to the get variable function which we'll create now and it's just going to uh, retrieve the variable from the symbol table if it exists so we'll say var name so we have a variable name and what we're going to do is we're going to um, just do an if statement we'll say if uh, var name in symbols then we'll just say print uh, true or else print undefined variable so let's uh, run this so we're getting this none type error because basically we're not returning anything from the function so we're trying to print um, the word none because uh, in the earlier videos I showed you um, if a function doesn't return anything then it just basically returns none and none um, isn't something we can uh, if we go up to the do print you can see that we're you know checking if it's uh, we can't you know manip we can't uh, get the first certain number of characters from the uh, non object so where it's failing that's why um, it's messed up so we can go up here and we can just return we can actually say if the variables found return uh, var name or sorry we'll actually want to say symbols var name and then uh, else we just want to return undefined variable and the reason we're getting this is we just need to set this to an elif because this way this will, only one of these will run at a time so if we run that you can see uh, for some reason it's giving us undefined variable so the reason this is undefined is um, because as you can see here the key is um, dollar sign variable but what we're actually giving it is var colon dollar sign variable so we just need to say var name equals var name equals var name and then we just want to get the for the um, we want to ignore the first four characters basically so if we run this now you can see it prints true and then it prints uh, 14 so we know that works we can get rid of true so I'll say a variable error undefined variable and run this now and uh, we get rid of the debugging stuff so get rid of the print tokens and down here get rid of the print symbols and print this now or run this now you can see it gives us 14 and that's exactly what we want we assign the uh, result of this calculation which is 14 to the variable uh, named variable and we print that uh, down here so say for example I reassigned a variable so I said variable now is um, a string Oops, that's what I call it. Uh, let's write my name. And then I'll print the variable again. And as you can see, variable up here is now 14, and variable down here is Francis. And this is a number, and this is a string. So we can change the type of our variables. Uh, so that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.